Good morning everyone, uh, this is Max and I am at the Sierra Nevada Aquatic Research Laboratory, uh, also known as SNARL, uh, in the Eastern Sierras. And uh, it's a really cool morning, it's early, um, the sun hasn't even risen yet, but uh, I feel like getting out and looking for some birds. So today I'm going to walk around the reserve and show you what, uh, what birds I can find. So uh, let's get- Oh man, check out that cool sunrise. Yeah. Beautiful. Anyway, um, we're starting the trail over here. Um, I can already hear a bunch of stuff, I just haven't seen any birds yet. Um, but I thought before we get in there, I just quickly mention where uh, we are and like what kind of habitat we're in. So we're technically in the eastern Sierras, because you can see the really high mountains. But uh, the habitat we're in is um, sagebrush uh, scrub. So. Um, it's a bunch of these really low-lying bushes um, and characterized a lot by, I believe that's the sage scrub. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just this really, really green uh, thicket of like short uh, shrubs. And this is the characteristic habitat of the Great Basin Desert, which is, I think, the largest desert in North America. It goes from like northern Arizona up into like Oregon and I think Idaho. But anyway, we're gonna go on through and try and find some of the birds that call this unique habitat home. So you may be wondering why there's an aquatic research laboratory in a desert habitat. Um, that's a good question. And the truth is, um, you know, a lot of researchers go to other places in the Sierras and the Great Basin Desert to research and not just research here. But there is research that's done here. And that is because there are actually riparian streams and creeks that go through here. Um, so it is a desert, but like any desert, there are oases. And that in the Great Basin is usually streams and creeks like this. I'm not sure what we have here. I'll have to put what uh, the name of this bird is. Uh, in the video. Got a western tanager over there. So we saw a few of these in the video at Valentine East Sierra Reserve, but this is the first one I've seen at uh, this reserve. Um, and again, they're my favorite bird in the Sierras. Just really colorful. All right, so now we're coming up to birch and aspen forest. Um, so as I said, this is uh, these trees are characteristic in uh, a lot of Western North America of where streams are and where water is flowing. So uh, that tells you we're near water usually, um, and there is water up here. So we're gonna go uh, see if we can find any birds that are hanging out around here. I can hear a Western woodpecker in the background. So I'm gonna see if I can find him. I believe those are some spotted towhees over there. Could be wrong, though. they're very far away. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll get a better look because we're gonna walk over that way. That's an old hornet nest. <laughs> I've only seen one hornet nest other than this one ever in my life. And it was it was a big one like on the east coast that actually was active. But this is an empty one that at one point was active. And uh, you can kind of see what the inside of it looks like. Let me just get the camera in there. Yeah. Like up here. Um, all of those little comb things. That like uh, that look like hexagons with like little circles. That's where the uh, baby wasps, the larvae, would be hanging out, and so the uh, adult wasp would go retrieve food and bring it back to the larvae that are in there. And uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to disturb this because all the adults would come out and they would attack. Um, but yeah, that is really cool. I've I've never seen the inside of a hornet nest, and I don't think many people have. So hope that is interesting to you. Uh, some more mountain chickadees. I 
Either these are way more common than I thought in this type of habitat, or I'm just really lucky that there's a flock coming through today. But yeah, it looks like they might be feeding on some berries, but I think in general they're mostly insect eaters. Look at that great expanse of sagebrush and grassland. Got some early morning deer over there. There's two individuals. And if we go all the way over here, I think, yeah, got three individuals. Good to see some deer out here. Yeah, they really like uh, the sage habitat. There's a lot for them to uh, browse on. Um, but they especially like it here at the reserve um, because we have the streams here. Um, and, you know, deer, just like us, they gotta have drinks on a regular basis. So, even though they're found in many different habitats, they tend to be found most often in places where there's a good water source, especially during the dry season like this summer. They are galloping off. They've had n enough of this weird human just standing behind the fence looking at them. That's cool though. We got a brewer's sparrow over here. Um, these are one of the more common birds I find uh, at this spot based on the limited experience I've had. Um, but I haven't seen that many of them today, so I'm glad we got some video of one. Uh, they're really drab looking sparrows. They don't have a lot going on, but that drab appearance helps them to blend in to their surroundings. Um, because, you know, we're living in, uh, the place we're in is a sagebrush environment, so, um, you know, not, not too colorful, except uh, for the greens and yellows, so brown is a good color to have in this environment. Got what I believe are some lesser goldfinches in there. That, that is the male, I believe. And then, there was a female over there. So not the best video, but uh, at least we got to see them. These are really common back where I live in Southern California. I'm not sure how common they are up here, but uh, they mainly feed on seeds, um, sometimes nectar from flowers. Got a little wren over here. I think it's a house wren. Um, these are common throughout North America and they even go into the tropics too. So they've got a big range and they occupy a wide variety of habitats. They also make really cool calls as you can hear. I also just realized that there's a spotted tohi up there. Um, Yeah, I have these down where I live in Southern California as well. They are, have a huge range throughout the West. So I believe that's another green-tailed towhee. And then there's also another wren over there. Lots of birds in this one spot. Look at this really pretty habitat we're walking through. Nice stream there. We got a western wood peewee over here. Um, we saw a lot of these in uh, the last video I made, so I'm probably going to keep this more brief. But uh, even out here in a very, very different habitat, they are still very common, and I know where to find them on the reserve because just like uh, the place we were at last time, um, they're very territorial and they have certain perches that they like to stay on. 
Got an American Robin over there. We saw a good amount of these in the pine forest at Valentine Reserve, but there are plenty of berry bushes around, so I guess it's good habitat. There's another lesser goldfinch here. I believe we have a black-headed grosbeak over here. Oh, I think that's another one too. Feeding on something there. Maybe leaves? I don't think these bushes have berries. We've got a California ground squirrel over there. Um, they are um, common throughout a lot of California. Um, so they're not a unique site um, out here. Um, but I thought I'd uh, point them out as this guy's actually sitting on top of a bush. So sometimes we'll do that um, either if it's a cold morning like this to warm up, which is probably what he's doing. Um, but they also uh, do that to get an eye out uh, to see if there's any predators, like birds of prey, and also me. So I'll try and get a bit closer, but uh, he's probably not going to let me get that close. Another green-tailed towhee over here. These are my favorite birds in the sagebrush environment. Um, and I didn't see any before this summer because I hadn't really spent much time in this habitat. But I would say they're one of my favorite birds. Um, they have a really cool pattern, um, and uh, based on where I've looked from, they're pretty scarce. Uh, but they like low, low-lying bushes like the sagebrush in really open areas. Um, that's the best place to find them. Over here we have a really cool bird. I'm not going to be able to get very close because of where he is, um, but hopefully you can see him well, well enough. Um, that is a loggerhead shrike. Um, so these are birds that really love open country, just all over the west. Um, they also are in the east, but um, they're not as common there because a lot of open country in the east has been uh, changed over the years by human use. However, they are really cool birds um, because they have a really unique feeding strategy. So they are they are songbirds technically, uh, and perching birds if you want to call them that as well. But they act like a bird of prey because they will tackle um, all sorts of things. Small mammals, lizards, snakes, insects, um, even other birds like uh, the lesser goldfinches that we were seeing earlier. And um, yeah, they're, they're also names like the butcher bird uh, because like they just do so much killing of like other of other animals that are sometimes even their own size. Um, another reason why they get the nickname butcher bird is because when they kill their prey, um, they'll eat some of it, but they usually won't eat all of it. What they'll do is they'll take the leftovers and bring it over to a really spiny bush, of which there's plenty out here in the sage scrub, and they will uh, put it on there and like spear it on and just uh, leave it there and uh, keep it until there's a harder time where there's not as much food around and they need that uh, food that they caught earlier. So basically they're creating a uh, larder uh, that will sustain them in harder times. Um, but anyway, yeah, really cool birds. Uh, I've seen them a few times before, but whenever I see them, it's usually uh, an unusual find. So I'm really glad we got to see one today. Got some chipmunks up here. In the bushes. Uh, looks like they're playing around, honestly. And I've been told by someone who's doing research on chipmunks at this reserve that these are the least chipmunks. Um, I honestly don't know. That's what I'm going to call them, but you know, chipmunk identification in the western United States is really difficult. There's another chipmunk up there. Yeah, they really like going around in the bushes. Um, I'm guessing it's part of their feeding strategy, but uh, also it gives them a good eye out for if there's any predators around. And they are very alert. It's very hard to get close to a chipmunk. Another yellow warbler. This one's actually in the sagebrush, which is kind of interesting. I mean, the riparian streams aren't that far away, but it's still kind of cool to see in a drier habitat. We got a sagebrush lizard right here. Um, 
I haven't seen too many of these around uh, this area, um, but as their name suggests, the main habitat that they occur in throughout most of their range is the sagebrush. So it's no surprise that there's one here. Um, in some areas, they will also be found in other habitats. It really depends on where they are because there's a certain elevation that they like, generally like high elevation, I forget what the exact numbers are, but I would say within the uh, 8,000 range is probably a good guess, um, but I'm not exactly sure. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, uh, they're generally a high elevation lizard. They look really similar to the western fence lizards that uh, you see in much of California. Um, but their pattern is a bit more smooth, not as contrasty, um, a little bit different. And as I said, they're pretty much only found in high elevation areas. I believe we have a hairy woodpecker up there. The tree. Um, these are common throughout many western woods. Oh, uh, I think a towhee flew. Well, no, actually, that's a shrike. So a loggerhead shrike flew up there. That's probably the same one we saw earlier. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, hairy woodpeckers, common in woods throughout uh, the west. Um, they're very similar to the downy woodpecker. They're virtually identical in looks, but the uh, hairy woodpecker is a bit taller and bigger, and it also has a longer beak. So, with experience, you can tell this one apart from the downy woodpecker. So we've got some uh, common ravens up here. Um, normally, this is a, a fault of mine, but normally I don't really focus a lot on ravens because they're just so common and they're just plain black. They're really uninteresting to me because I like seeing different things. Um, but the truth is they are probably some of the most interesting birds behavior-wise, they, crows and jays, are among the smartest birds and have been put through countless experiments uh, where they've had to solve puzzles, um, and their intelligence has been ranked uh, similarly with uh, that of primates and dolphins and porpoises. Um, so they are very smart. They really flip the, um, the phrase bird brain on its head because they are anything but what that phrase applies. These are amazing animals. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video today. Um, it was a good day. We saw a lot of different species of birds, uh, including some that were probably a bit more unusual for this area. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it was fun to watch. And uh, if you liked this and want to see any other videos I make, uh, please subscribe. Um, I make videos about wildlife watching experiences like this, um, different ecological and conservation concepts that I find really interesting, and also tips on how you can get out and do what I'm doing right now, watching nature as it is in the wild. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.